Australia is colorful and wild. There's a lot of wild stuff going on there. Every day we saw an animal. It was kangaroos, wallabies, or weird reptiles, or colorful birds that we don't have in Europe. I think when you like hear about a place and you know of roots that exist there, you're like, okay, cool, those roots are in Australia. But then you start digging deeper and you see all these other roots that are nearby and all these other world-class boulder problems, uh, trad climbing. Like, I didn't know so much existed in one area. I'm Stephen, I'm from Melbourne in Australia. The Grampians is awesome uh, and it just has the best climbing and bouldering that you could find anywhere. We just wanted to climb. We wanted to crush. We wanted to climb boulders, to climb hard routes. Uh, we wanted to try trad climbing. We just wanted to climb as long as we can and until we cannot handle it. <laughs> Awesome things you have to do in the Grampians. You have to go to Muline, you have to go to Taipan Wall, and you have to go bouldering. You have to go bouldering to the Hollow Mountain Cave and to the Kindergarten. Um, check out the boulders around Buandic if you can. There's so much to do. After not bouldering for like two months, it was pretty sweet to finally throw a crash pad on my back and leave the harness at home and go boulder. Dead Can't Dance is notorious for the world famous shoulder move. because a um, few people advised me to go try it because it could fit me and indeed when we got there it was big overhang, a lot of pockets tried all the moves once and then I linked it pretty quick Doing that boulder, which is my second hardest of the grade, it was very cool and very promising for the rest of our month and a half plan. As we roamed about from area to area, we found a lot of classic uh, V10s. It's really good to um, put on my on-site hat and try my best to suss out the beta before and, and give it some good first go attempts. And I got lucky with a few like. Butcher Choice and Cave of Manhand. For sure, we were both really excited about Eye of the Tiger. Uh, I had seen it in videos and photos and heard Charlotte talking about it a lot. At some point, we could not resist anymore and we had to go to New Line to check out the Eye of the Tiger. Climbing along that circle, which makes the route so famous. Then it goes through the roof, which is probably the crux of the route because it requires some funky beta. After passing 
that challenging crux, I'd say that my heart rate increased a little bit because I knew I'd passed a hard section and the last slabs was also a bit hard, so I, I just didn't want to fall anymore. We just wanted to try everything that was around the eye of the tiger and the one that we had in our scope was called Flying Duck. It started on the left side of the cliff and then traverses just at the leap of the roof and then finishes uh, same as the eye of the tiger. So we both had to climb Flying Duck and we both managed to do it, which was great. I clipped the chains and as soon as I did that, I felt this sharp pain right in my side. So I waited a few days to see if the pain was gonna go away and it never did. So we decided to drive into Horsham and book an appointment with a local PT, but he told me I have at least four to six weeks of no climbing. It was such a bummer that Josh got injured at the beginning of that trip, but in the same time he could still walk around and check out all the areas. It was good for me because he could belay me around and the next place on the list was the Thai Panama. On the approach, at some point you go over a hillside and the typing wall appears with this big orange face and black stripes. The plan is to stick clip the first bolt because it's about five meter high. I don't really like that. There's one thing I'm not sold about the type and wall is the bolting. The bolts are really far apart in a way that is really unsafe. I mean, you could fall at the middle of the cliff and you're on the ground. I, I wonder why it's like that. Why is it so run out? So back in the day, there was so much rock to climb, so many new routes to put up and climbers had no money. And so they put in as little gear as possible. Uh, and this is the origin of the Australian ethic. Um, and because these climbs were done traditionally um, with terrible gear bought from the hardware store. Um, that tradition has been maintained over time. Um, and that's something that we like to share with international climbers when they visit, um, just so that they don't send everything on their first try. I'm getting in the route, which I believe is called Kiran. The main reason we're in the Grampians in the summer is because we had to plan around all these different uh, locations around the world and the best temps and it was a toss up to have either like okay temps in this place or really bad temps in the other. Um, but we just had to suck it up and deal with the summer in Australia to have better temps in another place. Playing hard in the heat. I'd have to say this is the warmest Thanksgiving I've had. Looking for ice cream, because it's a rest day and we're boiling in the house. They come here, it's a little colder. <laughs> we're living. It's way too hot. I'm sweating right now talking. I'm gonna go to the pool. Let's go to the pool. But in the same time, it was a great opportunity for us to check out other sectors that we probably wouldn't have had the opportunity to check out if the weather was good. So we did a lot of track climbing and we checked out some very, very beautiful sector like where uh, our teammates principal is. And also the sector Bondur where there is some very good rock, very beautiful and I think about um, catch some picture in particular which is very technical and goes through some crazy features that just 3D off of a very uh, blind face. Nice shot. Cool, that's it. Thanks for the quick draws and the better. Yeah, that's just the service. <laughs> Are we gonna get a bill later? No. 
No, it's totally voluntary. Yeah, it's a community service. One great thing about being in the Grampians is being able to hang out with our friends um, Steve and Kate and their kids Susie and Tommy. It was good to get to know Steve and Kate even more, and especially in their home country, uh, where they toured us around, made us bread, gave us a guidebook, gave us crash pads. So you think you can dance is actually a boulder that we tried on our first day when we were in the Grampians? It's our last day climbing in the Grampians. But it was in the back of my head this whole trip, and then I got injured. So I was like, oh, I'm like not only not gonna send this, but I'm not gonna be able to climb for the rest of the trip. But on our last day, we said, you know what, before we leave Australia, I just have to go tape up my oblique. I have to take a bunch of vitamin I and like try to send this boulder problem. We just say goodbye to the Grampians in the summer because we know we're gonna be back in the winter. We made our way towards Melbourne where we sat and hanged out at the Northside Bowling Gym. Australia, we're coming back for you. But first, we have to go to New Zealand. And we're looking forward to tour around, leave out of our car, and just road trip for a month and a half. Okay. <gasps> G'day, my name's Steve-O, I'm from Australia. G'day, my name's Ruben Bennett Daly, I'm from Melbourne, Australia. <laughs> that was perfect. Why are there flies all around my face? Did you stink, I already told you. Let's go climb and let's do some easy trad. Oh god. It's like a bird. If we kill it, more are coming. Okay. I don't know what kind of spider that is, but we need to figure it out. Oh shit. Oh. Okay. <laughs> I'm leaving. Okay. Ah! So we're releasing it across the street from our house. We hope that it will go into that house. Yep! Uh, often found indoors. The huntsman spider often wanders into homes and is found perched on a wall. Ooh, you want to see the guts of it? No, that's good.